the Larkin tokens of Unzunkulu, South Africa. The location is now in present Natal, as you can see per the map of South Africa. John Larkin and his wife Francois Charlotte built a store on their farm Bontrand in 1901 and engaged in barter trade with the natives in the district. When John died in 1906, his widow, with the help of her brother, continued trading. They issued a series of cardboard tokens, uh, none of which have survived, but as these could readily be altered and were easily damaged, they were withdrawn and destroyed. In 1907, between two and 3,000 aluminium tokens were ordered from Durban. These the natives accepted, as did all the neighboring stores. So these tokens were in use from 1906 to 1929, and they were aluminium, and they were uniface, and they were Bont Rand store tokens. In the meantime, other stores had been built up at Kupa, Cancele, and Piccinini. To distinguish turnover at the different store symbols, as shown, were engraved on the blank reverses. The stores were sold in 1909 to Strachan and Co. The stores that the Larkins operated in their heyday were Bontrand, where they did not have any mark on it, Kupa, which had a circle engraved on reverse, Cancelli, which had a capital C engraved on the reverse, Piccinini, which had a triangle engraved on the reverse, and Stafford's Post, store leased out from time to time, a cross engraved on the reverse. Larkin, RPL and NFL, Thorninghurst near Donnybrook, Natal. Type 1, Old Larkin Store Tokens. They were used between in the, the 40s to mid 50s, also aluminium, and they were classified as store tokens. In 1939, Robert Percy Larkin and his wife Nora settled on a farm in the Donnybrook area of Natal, where laborers were plenty though cash to pay them was in short supply. To overcome this, he resorted to using his mother's tokens, which he had taken from, with him when he left the family home in Umzinkulu. These were again readily accepted by both workers and neighboring storekeepers, who would exchange them for cash at the month end. Type 2 Bobbins uh, they are NF, they are NFL Bobbins numbered 1 to 40, and they are RPL Bobbins numbered 1 to 70. Robert and his wife devised a scheme whereby numbered bobbins were given by way of identity discs to the casual tocht labor they employed. Tocht is basically uh, casual labor. Farmers often, often employed young boys from the age of eight on a casual basis to help in such tasks as milking cows, herding cattle, etc. And most of them used to reside on the farm or were, who were from the families of the workers. They were given bobbins which at the end of each day were exchanged for tokens and which again were accepted as cash by most of the neighboring storekeepers. Type 3, the closet tokens. These are extremely rare. These tokens did not circulate. When Robert and his wife retired in 1955, whatever tokens were on hand were supposedly destroyed by being tossed into a field toilet. Yes, a field toilet. However, a quarter of a century later, collector and researcher Scott Bolson was able to discover the site of the toilet and excavated what remained of the tokens. These are easily distinguished from the original store tokens as they retain traces of their long internment. Examples of most types were found, but reportedly none of the Cancelli Tiki and only one of the Cancelli Two Shilling. The actual map that led to the rediscovery of the long drop field toilet that had long housed the discarded tokens. You can on there, you can just make out barely the, the water tank, the trees, the house, uh, the hedge. And uh, they were set about, um, and if you went to Scott Bolson's website on the internet, you'll actually see additional photos where they actually dug it out. References, you can look at the newly uh, published MTB on South African tokens. Uh, it hasn't been distributed worldwide yet, but it'll be soon out there. Uh, numbers from MB1215 to 1215. 
to 20C, and then Hearn on 326, which it covers most of the, the Larkin tokens. Uh, special thanks to my dear friend, Alan Jacobs.